Okay. <laughs> I like. I just like how hello is in parentheses. So my spot. You can I, say whatever that, you like. I don't know how much improv. Is that a stage direction? I know you use a lot of improv on Veep. <laughs> <laughs> this is Anna Klumsky, and you're listening to In the Envelope. <laughs> yes. You heard the hello in it, didn't you? Welcome to In the Envelope, an awards podcast. I am your host, Jack Smart, awards editor at Backstage. I'm here to give you a front row seat to the Emmys, Oscars, SAG, and Tony's races. Who is in the running? What makes an award-worthy performance? And what are the secrets to giving one? These intimate, inspirational conversations with some of today's most talented stars provide you, dear listener, the kind of craft and career advice that could win you a statue of your own, and maybe, just maybe, a tantalizing glimpse in the envelope. But you want to just, just tell the truth. Mm. Just tell the truth. Mm -hmm. That's what you're here to do. That's what you're here to do. In the the storytelling or in general or both? (laughs) All of it. (laughs) Definitely Uh don't lie. Like, I think that in general, (laughs) lying just makes your life harder. Um, I believe we're speaking at the correct volume. Casey, Casey. Hi. hi. We've already we've started. Hello, hello. I'm um, back. Listeners, you remember Casey Howe. Hi, guys. She gets a shout out in every episode as <laughs> core <laughs> member of Team Podcast. Um, how are you? What's going on? Things are good. Things are good. We're all ramped up for Emmy season, so yes. that's exciting. We're starting our Emmys phase two yeah. run of the episodes of the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Should we say who else fun. we have? I mean... Mm. You'll see if you follow us on social media. Here's mm-hmm. my social media plug. <gasps> yes. Join us Do on it. In the Envelope on Facebook and in, at In the Envelope on Twitter because we have the exclusive behind the scenes content that hints at who's to come on the yes. podcast. And you guys get to see the cutest pictures of Jack and all the guests. So you yes. have to get a, get on there. Listen, there's like a reason them, I'm a podcast host. Them. I'm not super into taking getting my photo taken, but when you're posing with Emmy nominees, it's like, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll do it. You say yes. Um, who do we have on today? So today is the <laughs> wonderful Miss Anna Klumsky. Yes. AKA Amy from V. Amy Brookheimer from Veep. Um, for those who don't know Veep, we did go, we did talk quite a bit about Veep, especially season seven. We kind of nerded out about it, actually, the character development yes. stuff. You're gonna love this one. Oh my gosh, I'm so, so excited. For anyone who maybe doesn't know Veep, mm-hmm. I know we talked about Veep mm-hmm. a lot on this podcast, but maybe give a brief rundown of Amy and like yeah. especially like Where'd she end up at the end of it? <laughs> Which is my Veep favorite. did its final season, you guys. Veep is now eligible for Emmys for the last time. Yes. Unfortunately. And Veep as a show, I think, is really groundbreaking um, for mm. a number of reasons. It really handles comedy in a really unique way. It yeah. keeps the 30-minute format, which I think is fantastic. Sure. Um, and it's HBO, so it, it finds mm. a way to be edgy but still not like not slapstick it has a way of keeping sure. a little more highbrow but veep from season one it through season highbrow. seven still is laugh out loud hysterical exactly it's belly laugh but it is also like you say highbrow the it's dialogue is like it keeps you going our, yeah yeah it's and a they, very smart show mm-hmm. yeah and they somehow figured out a way to keep it current but still film a television show and i don't know yeah. how they did it well, but with it's this amazing last season like they took a hiatus before the last season and that all was filmed and aired after uh our recent regime change in our white house and in the presidency mm-hmm. and they are con veep is very conscious of art reflecting life but not imitating it outright yeah we yeah don't recognize people outright who are our actual public figures. It's right. more like a faint echo. It's like a funhouse mirror. Is fun how house mirror. Ooh, I like that. I yeah. like that. I like that. So Anna but, Klumsky's mm-hmm, role. Yes. So Amy's character mm-hmm. and her role really, really evolves from one thing to another, obviously, as they all do. But she starts out as Selena Myers, who's um, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, yes. JLD, as we call Friend her. Podcast. Friend of the podcast. <laughs> Listen to that one. It's fantastic. Um, but she starts out as her 
assistant and really her yeah. right hand woman mm -hmm. and really kind of stays that way throughout you know, all of the seasons and throughout her character progression, not to spoil it, but until this last mm -hmm. season where Amy really sort of comes into her own and you get to yes. see her, you know, with and without Selena and you get That's to right. see her tackling her own issues. Not that she doesn't in other seasons as well, but yeah. I really thought that this season was special for her for that reason. There's a lot for her to do. Yeah, yeah, really they gave, you know, each character obviously has its own arc, but I think this one yeah. in particular for Amy, there were a lot of episodes. I watched, I rewatched the last three last <laughs> night because I'm a super nerd. Um, but I think that was really, that was really cool to see from yeah. that standpoint. So I hope, yeah. um, I hope Anna liked that of just getting sort oh, of a different, yeah. you know, a different vibe. You can see it in her costume change in, oh, changes, totally. her makeup changes. Oh, it's gnarly. She does, like it's a total she, um, thing. It's, a, it's such a thing for her in the last season. She jumps to being the campaign manager for, from Selena Minor to Jonah Ryan, yes. played by Timothy Simons, also friend of the podcast. Yes. And it is quite the journey. Yeah. Quite the journey. Yeah. Well, it's just, I mean, I think that, you know, for Amy, she wants to be <laughs> Selena but she's not quite willing to go there. <laughs> yeah. She's like Selena, but like has a little bit of a conscience. Like the conscience yeah. like creeps in occasionally, you know? Yeah, just enough. Just, just enough. enough for us to relate. I mean, yeah. what, we do relate to these monstrous characters. That mm -hmm. is part of the appeal of the show, I think. Yeah. They're and all I think, horrible. And I think Amy's character was always kind of the one that I was like, yeah, okay. Like I, I can, myself. I see myself yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Not not quite as much as like in Selena, whereas like, you know, I other people I think probably do yeah. in Selena or in Dan or in, sure. you know, whoever, Maybe Mike Gary. or, yeah, or Gary. Oh, oh my gosh, <laughs> I love him so much. Um, but but that's, you know, I think that that was, that was really cool for, for Amy and I I think that yeah. the show did such a great job and she did such a great job She's really so good six consecutive mm -hmm. emmy nominations yeah yeah fingers crossed for her in this coming race i mean thank you for joining us anna because can i say something quite yes. honestly i banked on anna i was counting on anna getting nominated which is why i didn't oh. go to her for phase one <laughs> For Emmy's phase one, because I was like, she's probably getting nominated, so I can like, just I want revisit her, phase her for two. phase two. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad she joined us because this is it's our last chance to feature Veep. Yeah. So, yeah. Farewell, Veep. And yes. If you haven't watched Veep, go watch it. And uh thank you for giving us the rundown. That was helpful. How was that? Was that good? I think that was it was good. okay. It was helpful. And thank you for uh joining us. Everyone Always. stay tuned. We're we're launching another couple episodes with nominees. And then uh Casey and I will go about getting ready for film awards. <laughs> Yes, and then you'll hear from us again, hopefully, sure. um, around, on, during, after All of it. TIFF. Um, oh, Toronto, yeah. Yes, I'm committing yes. us to it. I okay. think we should commit to something. Literally on the record. Yes, yeah. it's happening. So right. um, so that'll be fun, and then we'll go it into that. But it's also fun because don't forget about television, right? Still happen. Oh, TV is not round. over. So yeah. we, you know, Veep and these shows that aired in the spring, you know, yep. we're going to get to still talk about them yep. in the fall, which Sad, is really clubs. cool. Yep. Really, really cool. So, totally. you know, the film season, or the uh, television season is... Forever. It's true. In fact, I guess this isn't our last chance to feature Veep because they're the eligible thing. for SAG yeah. and Globe. So. I still get to hold on. I still get to keep rewatching it. It's yeah. not over yet. Still relevant. Still relevant. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yay. Yay. This episode is brought to you by Game of Thrones on HBO. Summers span decades. Winters can last a lifetime. The final season portrays the main character's final fight for the Iron Throne. Game of Thrones has critics raving. The final season is the biggest show on TV, era-defining, and TV's greatest show of all time. 32 Emmy nominations, including Outstanding Drama Series, the most Emmy-nominated series ever, Visit hbo.com slash FYC for more on Game of Thrones. Anna Klumski has received six consecutive Primetime Emmy nominations for Supporting Actress in a Comedy for HBO's award-dominating political satire, Veep, from Armando Iannucci and David Mandel and producer-star Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Breaking into the industry as a child star in My Girl, Anna didn't come around to the idea of pursuing acting passionately until well after her time at the University of Chicago, using Backstage to work off-off-Broadway for years before appearing in film and TV again. Here it is, our interview with the outrageously talented Anna Klumski. I 
just got this like super witchy mermaid for a six year old. She's amazing <laughs> and I love it's her. Great. And so she's just like totally into it. In fact, like I don't have my phone on me because I left, I purposefully left it away um, yeah, in the lobby. But like th- she recorded her own meditation. For herself. For us oh. and for herself. Uh-huh. Like she's like, Mama, like this is like <sighs> about like a month ago. After, like, we, you know, because she would always see that I would do yoga and then I would do, me- like, meditate for, like, 10 minutes afterwards, right? And so she'd always see that. And so then she's like, I want to do one. So the it's because you're doing it. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. Totally. And then the yeah. app I listen to has, like, a kid's version, right? So I played that for her. It's all the rage. And okay. then, like, a month – or, no, then, like, a like a two days after, she's like, Mom, I want to I record a meditation. Can you do that on your, on your phone? And I was like, yeah. yeah. Like, I have no idea what she's talking about. So then I pressed record. She's like – Okay. Oh my God. And she's like, "Hi, I'm Penny. <laughs> this is a meditation." And I was just like, "Oh my God!" Like this, and it's not bad. It's like, great. It's not bad. Right. I'm gonna play it for you after this because it's. Wait, that sounds amazing. So, like, yeah, she's gonna end up being some kind of guru. I, don't I know. officially feel. Or not, or just like a. I don't know. I don't know what she'll be. Who cares? Yeah, she, I well, love her. Who cares? Well, if it's true though, like as say, a like, parent, who cares what they're gonna be as long as they love you, like love themselves and don't do harm. Bingo. Mm-hmm. Well, and it sounds too like is that like a. Is she exhibiting signs of wanting to be like an actor with the performing of the? She has. The I thing. mean, all kids do, right? Like, yeah. I I haven't met one kid who doesn't. Mm. Like, all kids pretend, you know. Totally. And yeah, that's yeah, part yeah. of it. And, and yeah. yeah, and like so for us, it's you know for actors. Are we recording? By the way, I don't know if we started. Or I not. think we are. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like blah 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 blah. No, yeah. That's what happens after I do work out. But You're... I um, but no, but yeah, like like that's the whole journey for actors right is to get back to what you were as a kid um yep you know? i've heard it said yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. getting in touch with your um your inner child your child your imagination yeah, all that. yeah but that's i mean that is it and that's why yeah i always i always discourage people from putting their kids into any kind of like te- like acting mm. programs or, or something you know mm. any, like teaching them how to because they are they're truthful by nature Gosh. like don't yeah, or putting them in any box in general. Yeah, so. well, definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, mm. I don't have anything figured out, but at least at least let kids <laughs> do <Totally>. that. <laughs> I mean, this feels like diving right in. But like, <laughs> is your child teaching you how to be better in touch with your inner child? Um, you know, it, it's really funny. She, I she I see that so like I see that with how they are with my. Uh, I, I'm sure. She, I mean, I'm sure they are. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure they are. Mm-hmm. But like, I, I, I joke with some of my colleagues that like, <laughs> when we read like stories or when you know, like there was, oh. I don't know, there was like a day when I was like reading a story, and she was like, "No, do it in this voice." And I was kind of like, <laughs> and I was kind of like, "Listen, kid, I get paid to do this. <laughs> You're gonna pay." Like, <laughs> <laughs> like this is mommy's work. Like what? You know, like <laughs> don't take it home. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't want to take notes. <laughs> I don't need to practice my voices right now. That's so um, funny. So I yeah I don't know. You might find other actors who kind of feel the same way. It's like this is what I do at the office. But what's <laughs> darling is it. I definitely see it bring it out of in like my husband and like my friends who will read like you know story time to my oh, kids sure. and like play they with become them. actors yeah, yeah like it's really it's really sweet and special to see that so um yeah i don't know yeah i don't know i whatever i've got a much more complicated relationship with with play at home i think but oh uh-huh. right yeah, 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 yeah whatever my mom's visiting so. with play oh, oh. <laughs> Well, let's make this as therapeutic as you want it to be. <laughs> I do have questions about like, because, okay, so because we're backstage, yeah. you know backstage. Yeah. You've spoken to us before, and I think you, <laughs> did you ever use backstage yes! for casting notices? Of course. Tell me in great detail, <laughs> what did you use us for? When was this? Um. So, yeah, when I got back into acting, yeah. when I was, I had done, I had finished training like at the intensive at Atlantic, mm-hmm. and... Um, this is what? 2004, I want to say. Okay. And yeah, and so God, 15 years ago, and wow, uh, like almost to the T as oh well, because it was a summer intensive. And then, yeah, and then it was about just getting on the boards again. So I just, uh, I just auditioned for everything that felt right, that felt like it could be fun mm. and stretch me. Yeah. Um, and I was constantly on backstage, and I was constantly submitting myself, constantly going to like monologue auditions for off off. Totally. You know like totally. shows and um and i did 10 free shows back to back oh my um, god oh you know yeah 
that's, that's like short runs of off off Broadway showcases. readings. Yeah, and you know, mm-hmm. but and you know how it is with off off. It's like it's you get the gamut, right? So it's sure. you get any you know you get like you you can you can be with the theater companies who like are just. Good, you know, like just at the precipice of maybe becoming professional, cool. right? Mm. And then you also, on the other side, get the kids who <laughs> met at the college and just want to find out if Viewpoints works on stage. <laughs> yes. And, yes. Um, and then everything in between. So, right. Right. yeah. Right. Varying you know. levels of uh, success and varying levels of like... Yeah, of just... Organization and... Ridiculousness. <laughs> and, but, you know, it's practice. It's all practice. It's practice. And... Sure. Um, yeah, I would not be I would not be able to say that I'm as, as blessed with the career I have now if, if it weren't for honestly, I mean I sound like this is a commercial or something, but I, right. if it weren't for backstage, of course I use backstage. Good. Yeah, that is what we want to hear. <laughs> it sounds like too like that I love the idea of a 10, 10 free shows back to back too. It's like yeah. it runs the gamut and you would say it's good practice, right? It's, it's just it's the pra- I mean you have to. And it gets you a resume. I mean, you yeah. know you, when you're auditioning for stuff, I, I was also very fortunate to already be signed with an agent at that point. Okay. Um, so I was also auditioning for things by day, you know, but then also practicing and rehearsing for these That's crazy cool. shows at night. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just better if you can say that you've been doing stuff. Yeah. And would you <laughs> say part of the goal, like, in the Looking at Backstage Casting notices was to book a job? Or it sounds like you were using the auditions as an opportunity to practice. All of it's practice. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, it's all practice, number one. Number two... I was using the backstage notices to get on the boards, to get mm-hmm. acting, you know, in shows and, you know, and build a resume and build my chops. Awesome. So that's, yeah, that's what I was doing. It wasn't about like, yeah, I, I never found anything professional. Um, right. Be, but that's because I already had it. I already had an agency that was helping me do mm-hmm. that. Um, and so eventually when I, when I did book my first gig, <laughs> 10 shows later, right? You know, like when yeah. I did, you know, that was, I booked my first... Well, I guess I, I was really, you know, they call, you know, there's that beginner's luck thing. There was wow. somebody who saw measure for measure when I did that. That was the first thing I did out of training. Um, and I did it in Queens in a basement. Sure. And somebody did come to see that who was, I don't know, like they were in South Carolina doing some indie movie, but they paid. How and random. so they did. They so I did get that I did uh, book that, you know, indirectly, um, via the performance that they saw. So yeah. that's great. And then that got me mm-hmm. my insurance back. Um, but oh. then I didn't work for like you know the, yeah. Then I didn't like you know make money for <laughs> like another year. <laughs> yeah. But that got me some rent and got me insurance. So right. like thank you. And more, yeah. Yeah. Like I say, it's I mean they call it beginners luck, but it's just like that push from. The universe saying, okay, yes. I'll bankroll you this far. We're all about those pushes from the universe. Right. On this podcast, we love hearing about That's like, it. <laughs> That's all there is. I mean, come on. Some random person in South Carolina. It's stuff like that you would never expect. Never. Like, never. They, they approached you directly after the after the, seeing that yeah. show. Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't because of that show. Like the show, it's all related. But I guess yeah. I had known this per. I had known like one of the people who were in it or something back when I was in Chicago, and mm. they thought of me, and then they looked me up to see what I was doing, and I happened to be doing that show. I see. They sent a friend to go see if I could still, you know, That's if I okay. could act, ah. which, which I could, and then and then they were like, "Oh, phew, she can act." And yeah, the fact that she's doing a show in a basement in Astoria means she might be affordable at this time. Right. Well, she's doing the work. She's willing to do the work. Exactly. And yours is an interesting case. Like anyone taking just a on paper look at your at your resume, there's yeah. an interesting – it's so interesting you're saying that you had to build up a resume because technically you did have previous credits on your resume. I did, but, it, but as a 10-year-old. So <laughs> exactly. that's, you know, and and that's like as we were saying, that's a whole other thing. You, you don't, yeah. You're not using a craft. You're not mm. – you know, often you find people who when they were young like can't act worth a lick when they're older – Mm. Um, at least that was my situation because I, you know, it's, you say when you're little, it's just like, you know, there, these, you know, silly adults like give you this, um, ah. this concept of the, the natural, oh, you're a natural. It's like, yeah, all kids are naturals. All kids. All kids are naturals yeah. unless you F them up by putting them in, you know, some kind of an acting class <laughs> and making them yeah. compare resumes with other professional oh, children. Sure. Yeah. Um, and putting them under a ton of stress. Uh, like right. Yeah, anyway, yeah. it's, that's hell. It's just hell. But, um, 
But yeah, so, you know, there was this concept of just like, we'll say the lines and they come out right. You know what I mean? And that does not work <laughs> when you're an adolescent or when you're gotcha. a young adult. Yeah, it does not work. So okay. you have to have a craft. You have to have a craft. Yeah. yeah. And you wanted to dedicate yourself to that. Definitely. I want to hear all about that in terms of like, did you have to convince yourself? First of all, when were you first bit by the acting bug or do you remember? I... As a grown-up, I it was when I was back in – I wasn't acting, and I, I mean, I wasn't even paying SAG dues, um, yeah. you know, and which, in retrospect of this story, if we're listening to the whole thing, that's why I needed to <laughs> book something to get insurance back. Uh-huh. Um, but anyway, so um, – but yeah, I I was working here, um, like, as a fact checker for a food guide. Yes. And then – but, you know, you see enough theater, and – my my first real moment of just like oh my god I have to do that was Mercedes Rule in uh-huh. um, the Goat or Who Is Sylvia oh, by amazing. Edward Albee it was it was amazing I and see. and uh, so yeah it, that was like I it was the first time that I really was like oh you know y- this is an art and you can mm. you know it's not just a a quote unquote gift that you know what I mean doesn't need to be honed or something like it's an Mm. actual thing that somebody's doing eight shows a week and she just you know delivered that text to me as an as an audience member and I was so moved uh, and inspired by that so yeah that was the first moment that I was like I have to do that but it was the first time that I ever I ever really knew what that felt like what that was um before you know it was it's much more about no it's more about like you know, the show business and the uh, ego of your parents and, you know, um, hmm. and all around you and, and its popularity contest as a kid, right? And yeah. so, or being um, recognized as Yeah, and like, that. and, and yeah. being, and getting the approval of the adults. And, you know, that's what it yeah. is as a kid. And so that's yeah. what it is for anything, you know, like any kid who plays chess really well, it's still about the approval of the adults. <gasps> sure. You know what I mean? It's, sure. Um, wow, yeah. So, so yeah, so... So that that performance was my first time as an adult, just being like, "Wow, this is this is something noble and worth pursuing," oh, as opposed cool. to. But then, of course, I was terrified for like two more years and pretended that I didn't. Yes, I didn't feel that. <laughs> and terror is good because then you're it's like you're getting warmer if you're scared of it. Yeah, 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 it's true. I know this this lifelong. This lifelong uh, examination of the difference between, like, good fear and bad fear, right? Like, <laughs> Sure. Like, that's what being in the arts is, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Taking risks. and Taking risks and, and knowing that it's okay mm. as opposed to, like, taking the risk of staying on that subway train when it's completely empty except for one dude with, like... <laughs> that's a different kind of... Totally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Here's some great advice. There. I'm gonna sit on this train because it's <laughs> inspiring. Embrace. <laughs> I'm embracing my terror. Like, no, get off that car. <laughs> really practical tips for New Yorkers. But it's hard. It's any hard. Any public transit. Yeah, totally. That's so funny, though. I really thought that maybe, given your narrative, that it was about reacquainting yourself with your inspiration or with your connecting to love of acting. And it sounds like no. You you had to get acquainted with it. As yeah, an adult. I had to understand that it was not everything awful. Everything that you had. Oh, yeah, you know, because you had, you had I well, I mean, as a kid, I lo- like there were things I loved as a kid. For instance, okay, we're gonna say Edward Albee again, but it's true. Oh. Like you know, like as a kid, I wanted to be in, you know, like who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? I yeah. was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. You or saw I, that as a kid, and I mean, kid being thirteen. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. You know, or I, you know, as a, you know. Or wanting to be, you know, Vivian Lee in mm. in um, Streetcar or mm-hmm. in uh, Gone with the Wind, and so or being Betty Davis. So it's like, yes, there was a there. You, I, I understood the nobility, and I understood yeah. it somewhere, but the nobility. But being in it, it's just so tainted, um, mm. you know. And yeah, it's uh, I, I, it became so. And also, when you're an adolescent, no matter what you're doing as an adolescent, mm-hmm. rejection is a part of of being an adolescent, right? So true. And so then having to go through that kind of uh, sort of like in the supernova size of it with it yeah. being an entire industry rejecting you, being enti- you know, being grown-ups and adults yeah. who once thought you were so cute now telling you <gasps> this and that. You uh. know, so right, so it, it got wrapped up in um in the in in all the ugliness and all of the in all of the poison parts of yeah of um, being in the public eye as opposed to mm. just the, like, the art. Yeah, there was no sense of, like, yeah. art 
of it when I was a You'd kid. You lost the sense of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had no idea there was a sense of that. I thought it was, yeah, I don't know. Sure. I thought it was like, I don't know. I, th- I thought it was just like, you know, just, hey, giving them the show. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe if you'd kept plugging away at it rather than taking a break, you wouldn't have really honed in on the passion part of it. And the I heart. don't know that I would have. Yeah, because yeah. I even tried. I mean, I still, I did, act, you know, I, I did some shows in college where where there are plenty of people who are coming at it from, you know, mm. the, the, the sweeter sense of it. But I just remember watching them doing vocal warm-ups and being like, you guys are nuts. Because I didn't know as a <laughs> yeah. kid what that was for. I gotcha. thought that was silly. But but right. again, being away from it, then coming back to it and understanding what practice is and what your dis- what discipline is. And then mm-hmm. going to training and going, oh, that's what a vocal warm-up is? Uh-huh. Oh, sure. I'll look as, I'll look as nuts as possible. Right. That's the goal. And yeah, look yeah. silly as possible because I know what the purpose is. You know, uh-huh. I think not having the purpose of it. Yeah, you know, um, was was what was felt so directionless as a, as a child. Yeah, yeah. Is part of this also like a theater? I I don't want to reduce it to a theater versus screen thing, but like, was it because you saw Mercedes Rule in person that like it's possible? The... I mean, I I mean, I can I can recall the feeling of the goosebumps, mm. so it's very possible. Mm-hmm. And, but I was always I all I always loved like I was always a theater kid from the beginning. Sure. Like the first thing that I remember choosing to do. Um, was, I mean, of course, it was dinner theater and Annie, you know what I mean? But that was yeah. something I wanted to do. I wanted, cool. I asked my mom, mom, can I try to d- be in that? Mm-hmm. Um, whereas all the commercials and print ads that I was in before that, that was completely parent chosen, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So so it was always theater. It was always, it was always wanting to do theater uh-huh. um, that, that drew me to it. Yeah. Do you th- sure. And do you think part of the um, maybe negative aspects of the biz highlighted for you was because of like the Hollywood aspect? I, I do think so. I, you I were think the so. leading role Yeah, because the, I mean, you know, it's, it's, everything gets, um, gets bastardized when it's, when it's about money and commodity, you know, and mm. <laughs> you're not getting so much of that in dinner theater. <laughs> Uh, sure. It's a little bit more. You're about still the fun getting of it. egos. I mean, if you know, you can you, like you're still getting all of the um, you know. There's plenty of of grossness, but um, yeah. but yeah, not on such a grand scale, and yeah. um, it's it's a little more balanced. And yeah, I mean, I, it was my happiest moments as a kid in the business. Yeah was doing theater was cool. the was the theater so if there's any quote you know if there's any aspect of the reacquaintance that mm. you were that you were mentioning before it would have been that yeah. it would have been wow That's finally cool. i live in new york and i get to go and stand yeah. at the tkts line and then go and see cool. broadway finally mm-hmm. and now i'm seeing broadway Yep. And I loved it. And I, I mean, when totally. I was a kid, that's all I wanted. It's, I mean, yeah. you know, it's the dream. That's all. Yeah, like I would just put on, you know, chorus line and just like choreograph like mm-hmm. everything in my bedroom. Like that's all I would do is just choreograph chorus line in my bedroom. So like Amazing. that's yeah, that's just awesome. like everybody else who comes to New York. <laughs> <laughs> so true. And is inspired relate, by Edward Alvey. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ever I'll be in a chorus line. Exactly. It says so much about you, Ever I'll be in a chorus line. It's not that deep. I'm the same as everybody on the, in this freaking town. <laughs> totally. Well, and it sounds too like on the in the I love this idea of the pre adolescent thing when it's about um uh so much of acting is about wanting people's approval and as a kid yeah. it's wanting adults' approval. Yeah. And then teenage years, so much of acting is about rejection. Teenage years mm-hmm. is about rejection. Te- yeah. Yeah. Our reflex life is the same. Yeah. It's, and then you're it's, an adult and you're all messed up in the head. Right. Like it's like are. the same, you know, Jung and Freud and all of it can <laughs> yes. like apply to you know, it applies to all of our journeys. Like yeah. we're all doing it in our own way, but like sure. this my version of it has to do with yeah. Yeah, has Acting. to do with business and yeah. and loving it or not and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it does sound like throughout all those phases, you did always know that rejection was a part of it. Because that's not necessarily – I mean, of course, yeah. it's sort of a negative. Yeah. Like the rejection from the idea of auditioning for nine, you know, ten mm-hmm, things and mm-hmm, only mm-hmm. getting one of them. Like, Yeah. No, it was a gift – though well, I mean because that was I mean that was devastating it was it was so much mm. it was it was so much rejection as a kid yeah especially as an adolescent not as a kid but as an adolescent mm. that um and it was all wrapped up in appearance all of it it oh. was always you know and it was always some kind of like 
corporate euphemism for she's too you know, too fat too for this. us or too much you or her skin or and whatever. that would get to you you yeah, would hear that always yeah. always and Brutal. yeah and sometimes it was very direct and sometimes it was very indirect but um mm. but yeah i got the message <laughs> and so it was very much the the first liberating thing as as an individual as a you know going from child to to grown up was when I was in college and I went on tape at my my agency that I'd gone on tape for forever mm. not getting stuff and I was in my car and I just looked at the sides on my passenger seat and I went oh, I don't have to do this oh I yeah. was like oh my god I don't have to do this I get to say no could do what you want. I can write papers <laughs> yeah. about yeah. Kant and Descartes, sure. and I don't have to do this. Yeah. It was so liberating. That's awesome. So that was like the first moment. And then, yeah, it was next. The ter- other epiphany. Th- then the other epiphany yeah. of like, oh, I want to do this. How interesting. You needed that. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Know, like the, the roundabout. Yep. You need to come around the roundabout. Yeah. And I was really lucky. Again, everyone ha- hopefully has this journey at some point. But the way it shook out for me was when I was – working in a you know just a nine to five I was a I was a this is after the fact checking job I was a an Mm. editorial assistant at HarperCollins publishing and so I was now on the quote-unquote buying and selling end of art so Mm -hmm. like people would send me their manuscripts Mm -hmm. and some of them would be real bad but some of them would be real good but we couldn't sell them that season gotcha oh you know and so I would have to reject a good manuscript. It's your job to do the rejection. Right. Oh. But it wasn't personal. Right. Do you know what I mean? So like it Ugh. wasn't like you're you're bad at this. So a lot of time it wasn't you're bad at this. It was, wow, wow you're so good at this. Keep doing it. Yeah. Just send us something we could sell or we're going to hang on to this until we can sell mm-hmm. it. But like wow. it doesn't mean you're bad. It, some people just shouldn't write, but that's but this but these people right like these you really good authors. Without, it was it, so it's... it was really mo- like I hmm. opening for me that like you know then later once I became an actor again going in on audition and not getting the job oh, yeah. had nothing to do with whether or not I could act it could be anything it had everything it could be anything number totally. one number two they've got one thing to fill they've got one mm. role of yeah. they, they could see five great actresses whom all of whom could fill this role and do something really interesting with it. But they've yeah. got to make a choice. They cannot cast totally. five people. Totally. So it's just like, yeah, I, I it's was... easier to not. It was such a gift to to realize that rejection had nothing to do with you. Sure. And that it was just complete, like, logic. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's like, just math, people. Like, just yeah. chill out. It, it will, doesn't you know? have to be discouragement. If anything, no. it, it it's probably encouragement and people aren't going out of their way to... To say, hey, I'm going to hire you next time. Or, right, like, right, right, it right. Up. Yeah, like, it's no, it's yeah, yeah. It, it's it, it ain't personal, and it has nothing to do with whether or not you're good at what you do. Mm-hmm. Just keep doing that, mm-hmm. and you know, it's and, gonna feel personal, but yeah, so I mean, I sometimes, I, and it just again, like I say, I I felt. I don't know. I felt very um, rational about auditions because cool. of this experience as as an editorial assistant. But yeah, I would I could probably count on my hand how many of them felt personal um, over, oh. like, 500 auditions in the last 15 years. <laughs> good. Like, yeah. isn't that great? Like, that I'm really, I'm, I feel I feel personally really good about that because I think that that's a battle um, mm. that could have been much more, like, hardly fought, you know. I and think those personal I, yeah. things are the adolescent, maybe the adolescent um, corporate. <laughs> maybe therapy. Yeah, I know. I don't I, – th- I remember them – Mostly those were ones where um, where you either had to jump through a ton of freaking hoops oh. only to be told, like, oh, we weren't going to do that anyway. You know, that like kind really of thing. really using you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and you're just like, J- could you just not have made me stay up till 4 a.m. and, like, come mm-hmm. in from my honeymoon or, you know, whatever it is. Uh-huh. But, like, and then, yeah, but so it's more like a person-to-person personal thing. Sure. Like, you just don't treat humans that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. As much, Some dignity. Be, yeah. Um, and then otherwise it would be like a craft thing. So, like, there was one where I oh. remember where it just killed me because – well, what it is is the, the ones that kill you are, like, the ones that you just, like, love. And yeah. you're like, oh, God, that role. I've always wanted to play that role. And then you go in and you're like, this is what I would do with it. And they're like, yeah, we don't want to do that with it. Oh. And you're like, 
And then you're like, okay, I'll try to stretch into the mold you've got for it, but, but it it's does not, my not vision. feel right. Like, okay. it just doesn't feel right. And, like, kills you. You know, and, like, it killed me. And then, like, you know, three months later, you read the review, and they're like, why did she do this with it? And you're like, oh, <laughs> I was right. I Validated. dodged a bullet. I dodged a bullet. That's so cool. Yeah, exactly. Because then you're like, is my taste in question? Exactly. And, and you're no, like, no, no, I got that one right. <laughs> they were trying to do something ridiculous with that role, and it did not work. And, and the poor you... actress, you know, right. had to get a bad review about it. Right. Because like, she It wasn't her fault. Better. The director totally. was like, oh, I want to do this. I'm like, no. No, you have good instincts. Yes. Yeah, it's about developing those. That's See, so awesome. sometimes there's a long game to the personal rejections. There's usually sure. there's usually a long game to the personal rejections. Sure. That's also why you're doing 10 free shows in a row. It's the same thing yeah. of like, I want to. Yeah. Get myself good at just learning practice. lots of different things. Exactly. It's just practice. Just practice. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm so glad that this, we've heard it on this podcast, like getting on the other side of the audition room table mm. is helpful for that reason, where it mm-hmm. sort of gives you that perspective. But, yeah. oh, my God, how random that it was in this publishing house that had nothing to do with acting. Yeah. In fact, I'm glad it it wasn't about me being like a, a director, director yeah. or a, yeah, I, I'm sure that's equally as valuable. It's probably mm-hmm. this similarly as valuable. Um, but, yeah, I I... I don't know. I love the ability to kind of like see everything very holistically and be like, oh yeah, well, mm-hmm. you know, what I what I learned there can apply to this, yeah. that which you know, seemingly very different situation, but really it's oh. completely applicable. Like, yeah, I, I, I want to be that. better at that. I want to be better. <laughs> <laughs> my life. Well, That's it's like, what you know, like people on. who are like, oh, I wasted so much time studying A, hmm. you know, in college, and now I'm doing B. And I'm like, so you don't think you learned anything that you could apply? Right. Of course, you learned plenty of things you could apply. Yeah. From A, now that from you're a. choosing B. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. It's a conscious versus subconscious thing, too, where mm. I can consciously tell myself, like, or I, I subconsciously know that I can take my skills and, and put them elsewhere mm-hmm. kind of thing. Right, right. But on a conscious level, it's like, no, this is what I know and this is what I don't. And the stuff yeah. that I don't know is scary. I know. And we think that we're in charge. Which is, yeah. Which is not oh, true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. You can't make sense of a path until you, like, right. look back on the path. Right. Well, like, like, look at yeah. your career. Like, exactly. You, can't, like, you look back and you're like, there was that epiphany and there was right. that epiphany. Right. Like, yeah. But in the middle of it, it's terrifying. <laughs> Yes, which also makes me think, like, are we in the middle of a similar thing now? Like, of course we are. Oh, yeah. The present tense. Yeah. Yes. All, well, first of all, all of us are. Yeah. And then if you want to do, like, astrology and stuff, there's, like, an eclipse that just happened. <laughs> so everyone's freaking yeah. out. Sure. And then what else? What else? Um, yeah. And then I don't know about everybody else, but, like, yeah, my, like, job that I just had for the last decade just ended. So, yeah, there's yes. there's definitely, a, like, the liminal phase feeling right uh-huh. now. Like, a lot of liminal phase, which is, like, a, like I love that phrase. I just learned it. I like that, too. Listening to an astrology podcast. Yes. <laughs> yes. Ooh, you're going to have to tell me what that is afterwards because I'm, I'm getting really into it. Oh, yay! Yeah. Me, too. I'm a... Double Libra. Okay. What is that? Rising and moon or your sun? It's my um, sun and moon. Sun and moon. Mm-hmm. And my rising is Sagittarius. <gasps> I have the same exact birthday. You're like a walking hail. new moon. That's fantastic. Anyway. Yes. What is yours? Oh, okay. So well, I have four plants in Libra. This is why we're getting along. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but I'm... Libras get along? I, I will. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, all yeah, about yeah. getting along. Okay. It's all about right? conflict, aversion. Yeah. Well, yeah. Pacifist. Yeah. That's me. Or acceptance of mm-hmm. both sides. Very diplomatic. Duality. Very yeah, mm-hmm, fair. Mm-hmm. I always call it the RBG. Like that's uh, it. okay. <laughs> I like that. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, okay. We could talk forever about that. We love, shouldn't though, because our, our listeners will be like, "This is ridiculous." Well, to, just to get back onto what you just said about your tenure job ending, yes. what a brilliant transition. So we should talk about Veep. How much time do I have? Veep season seven in particular. Like I oh. spoke with Timothy Simons Yay! right before. There's somebody the who was on started. the other side of the thing because he was working for a oh, casting yeah. director. He's also late in life. Like he, yeah, he had nothing for a long time, and then he, he, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. He's like, he's the same. I feel like we're the same age, so I've, slept. but yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah, he's he's phenomenal, and I cannot wait until oh everybody God. to realize that he's like one of the best actors we have. And Fully. but he was on the other side. He was he was mm-hmm. the casting assistant. Yeah. And so he knew all about that jazz. He has a very good, I think, attitude. Yeah. It's about having that perspective and the yeah. like. Yeah. We also talked about writing and he's he's working on that yes. other series and how he said everything you write for a long time is going to be trash. And you got to yeah. f- just know that and throw it out and it's yeah. fine or, or keep, you know, hold yeah. on. Yeah, I have not learned that. 
Are you thinking about that? That all? is something I've not learned. Um, yeah, it's all, it's all like, yeah, it's all thinking about it. I, yeah, I have not figured out a discipline for that yet. A discipline. Yeah, oh same. My God. Yeah, same. I mean, it, I, I think that anyone, truly anyone in the cast of Veep must be, because you are all creators in a sense, like mm. in that very specific sense, mm. you all must be brilliant writers in your own way, brilliant comedic writers in I'm your own I'm not a brilliant comedic ways. writer. I think you could be. I think Thanks. you probably I ju- are. I, uh, the, the idea of writing jokes to me is well, like, I don't know. I'm well, the, like I always, I always, I mean, I always laugh that I'm the joke killer of our cast. <laughs> really? Because yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, but I kind of go deep real quick and like, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like they can all be like doing this like fun banter, and uh-huh. they're all like, you know, a lot of them are very are improv trained, so they're very sure. into like the, you know, and I could just be like, yeah, doesn't that remind you of just, you know, people at the border and like, you know, and like, <laughs> and they'll just be like, well. That's it. That's, Moving yeah. on, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's great though. No, but I, I think that it's far too. Seriously. It goes back to that taste thing of like you have good instincts. Like <laughs> all of us who are watching, consuming art all the time, seeing yeah. theater all the time. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, we can do it. It is about it's the true. discipline. Yeah, it's that, and yeah, I think. I mean. No, I, I enjoy but. funny, and I am musical. I'm a musical person, so I think you mm-hmm. understand timing, and it's just in you. Yeah. But um. But yeah, if you're paying attention. Oh yeah. The the truth is always funny. The truthful yeah. moment, you know. You're that's, all brilliant listeners. That's what's funny. Yeah. Well, that's it. Totally. It's, it's it's really that's what's so fun, or was so fun. Oh. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Veep on HBO. The final season of Veep was hailed by critics as sharp and always excellent, as brutally funny as ever, and TV's greatest comedy. Nine Emmy nominations, including Outstanding Comedy Series. Visit hbo.com slash FYC for more on Veep. Congratulations I mean, on your Emmy nomination. Oh, 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 oh thank you. Thank you. I've, uh, <laughs> I'm just so used to get you getting Emmy nominated. I know exactly. Like... Well, that's what I'm, I'm like. I don't want to say. I can't say that. But what was I saying? What were you oh, oh, um, yes, we are very proud. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we're very proud of this. It's last good to have season. one last. The Emmy nominations are an opportunity to like talk about the show again. Yeah, like, and this, I mean, but yeah. this season was freaking. We are so proud of it. Oh, like yeah. it's, it was stupid, crazy, and we. <laughs> Yeah, I, it was I don't know. Crazier I'm really, than usual. I'm s- crazier than usual, mm-hmm. and that was our way of of art reflecting life. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we had to, and I, I just, yeah, I don't know. I'm super proud of it. I'm proud of oh, it, yeah. and I'm and I'm proud of everybody. And, you know, um, then then of course there was all this talk about you know how do you like about season finales. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's just like yeah, we that I, I think we did it. You guys I think we did stuck it. the I think landing. We sh- I think we totally stuck the landing totally. for every character. Oh my god. There's a lot of characters like too. Dave Mandel just like totally god, and our ra- our writers and yeah, it was incredible. Yeah, I'm really proud of him. Truly satisfying, and the, it's the kind of show I've said this I think before on this podcast where it feels. None of it feels polished because it all feels so spontaneous mm-hmm. and natural. But but it's especially when you rewatch, you're like, right. oh, this is very polished. Yeah, it's very like, and that last season is definitely that. Yeah, well, and it's just I don't know how they stuck it all in there. Yeah. I just don't. I I still, well, you know, it just makes you. It just I don't know. It that that kind of thing makes you believe in the elasticity of time because you're just. <laughs> <laughs> you're sure. just like I don't know how you got all of that in yeah. anyway yeah <laughs> and Amy in particular um, it was so nuts I mean it was funny talking to Timothy before having seen any of the season because he had a wild last oh. season but in terms of arcs yeah. Amy had the, the the actual I think like the most happened to her of anyone in the season yes. she had like three different seasons yes. of character development in one season yes and like first of all what is your take on I think two of those were in the finale itself <laughs> Like I mean, and well, and it's also I mean, I, as you could probably gather by now, I'm kind of I have a dramaturgical mind, so like yes. I love that I could go back to the beginning of the entire series, oh, cool. do the whole like you know scene analysis thing where you go why this play, why this day, why now, and uh-huh. why this part of Amy or any of the characters' lives, love it. and like you can actually you can do it, like you mm. can. Come up with a thesis for like why this time in Amy's life. Amazing. So awesome. So like, awesome. I, lo- I love that. I I love that. And I and yeah. And Dave, you know, Dave. Uh, that's our um, our showrunner. Mm-hmm. Just was so 
collaborative with me on this season and I'm oh, cool. so grateful to him um yeah there was like it all started with like a bonfire in South by Southwest and I was like all right what are we doing this season and he's and we and then we just kept rapping just kept rapping on Very ideas cool. and he invited me in the room um to talk about Amy and what we could do and I'm I mean wow I, it was it, I, I felt like so I don't know I, I had such a personal like artistic stake in what we were doing with her and I'm yeah. so grateful it was heaven it, it was heaven like to go to really, work yeah you really work. swung for the fences yeah it sounds like yeah and not to talk too much about art reflecting life <laughs> but like was Kellyanne Conway at all <laughs> a reference Absolutely, point? absolutely okay. I mean she yeah I mean, I'm not gonna play that it's I, why would we she's pretend that she's so. not yeah well hey man <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, you know, Sorry. no, I think backstage would be a great place for her to look for places to practice. Um, Fully. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. she's, you know, she's got a place where she's practicing. Oh, yeah. Um, but you did I, Kellyanne better than Kellyanne does Kellyanne. Thank you. But yeah. I, you know, I mean, and I was doing Amy, obviously. Yeah. I mean, that, that is, that is what we need to, you know, that, that's where I'll stop the Kellyanne reference is like yeah. explaining that basically the rise of Kellyanne and of many women like her, mm-hmm. of just like these, uh, like the aggressive, um, you know, s- sort of morally questionable, um, fe- like po- like vehemently populist females, how they Ooh. somehow became acceptable to an entire electorate that didn't find any other type of female acceptable mm, was really wow. fascinating to me. Sure. Um, and and also just you know just the um, the kind of plasticity with which she moves and which with which a lot of these these personalities move mm. of just like oh yeah you know I I believe that no no I don't actually I believe that like she's she sure. really there is a sense that she's playing everybody there is mm-hmm. a sense I'm always asking this even on our show because of Selena as well of like the feminism of one oh, like yeah. basically like well. Oh. I'm a feminist because I'm a female, and if yes. I'm winning, then females are winning, uh-huh. right? And so, oh yeah, with Selena, that's been always yeah, the case. Yeah, it's but... like yeah, it's that that egoic justification yeah. for um, you know, for basically the Mach- Machiavellian feminism, you know. How interesting. Um, and so that's the stuff that I was really interested in. So she she was absolutely an inspiration because mm. of the thoughts that that um, it evoked in me. But um, hmm. in no way did we want to do a parody and I thought that Amy yeah. was a perfect um, fit for exploring that because gotcha. I feel like she always wanted to go that direction Very I mean if you look at like season three is that when we did London when she really really snows Dan and like really kind of oh, is morally mm. like she gets his job and she I mean like she takes advantage yes. of the fact that he's in the hospital yes. and like it's you know, so she's always been cutthroat. Yeah. She's always been Machiavellian. How interesting. And I think that, you know, she just was able to kind of unleash the beast finally wow. um, once she untethered herself from both from from the idealism of like Dan and the idealism of Selena. I think she was able to hmm. just um, just fly in this terrifying way. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's that thing of it has to be surprising, but it also has to be. Inevitable and believable. Yeah, I mean, it's like I say, I, I, I don't think it was so much that I wanted to mold Amy to be like, you know, these these um, populist media figures. Yeah. It was not. I think it was that field. when I saw these populist media figures, I was like, mm. wait, that kind of reminds me of what Amy would want to sure. be. Like, wouldn't Amy just want to be that? She's like, opportunistic. Yeah. She's exactly. very, very power hungry. Yeah. She just doesn't like have they much weren't of a that life. mysterious to me because I'd been playing one for That's a while. That's so crazy. You know what I mean? Yes, and like. <laughs> <laughs> and what I love about the finale in particular, and this is spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen it, I guess, but like <laughs> you get to play all, you get to play her all the way down that road yeah. until the last minute. And then redemption. And yeah. pull back. <laughs> and the only person who, I feel, kind of yeah. feel like everyone in the finale has to decide. Right. Dark side. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, sacrificing everything. You know, and Selena's the only oh, one who crap. does it. You're making so much sense to me right now because Dave, so <laughs> Dave Mandel, our showrunner, is is I mean, really just an expert on Star Wars. Everything he's like written historical uh, books about it and everything. Really? Yeah, like published. Like he's so. Of course, <laughs> this was like our. This was every character's Jedi moment. Totally. You're so right. It's so yeah. It was it was very clearly like everyone has. Of well, course. I guess I guess except for Gary. Gary. I guess. 
but, but everyone that else moment, is no, like, but like the last, like going to the funeral. That's a choice. Oh. But like, that's a choice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And she, I think that I don't want to speak for her, but I think Amy pulls away and she chooses the light side. She chooses the right side. Mm-hmm. And then it, that's still reflected at the, at the, at the funeral, at the yeah. flash forward yeah. where she has actually, I don't want to harp on like the work-life balance thing. Cause that's been, <laughs> I feel like you've had to, you've talked about that plenty, but like, at the end, it's suggested that she does have a work-life balance. Well, we like like we said, with her... She found happiness. Yeah, with her yeah. and Bill Erickson. Like, they kind of sure. found something that worked. Yeah, yeah. They found it. Yeah. And, like, that was actually... Pete Hike, one of our exec producers, our co-exec producers and writers, um, he was kind of, like, like so giddy. <laughs> it was a giddy day, seeing everybody in age makeup. I mean, it was sure. phenomenal. Just what a great day. And, and, I mean, really, it's like... I recommend anybody to just be in a trailer with special effects makeup artists because it is spiritual. It is a spiritual oh, experience. Um, then just all the, the presence and, like, the dedication to one crowd. Oh, it's, it's it was heaven. so spot on. Yeah. So, but anyway, so we were all really giddy. It was our it was our penultimate day of shooting, oh. so it was just insane. And, yeah, like, seeing how everybody ended up, like, Pete Hike just looked at me, and he was like, and he was also the one who was giddy about the redemption scene. Like, he was just like, this is crazy just yeah. watching a- Amy try to go, like, try to s- get some kind of semblance of redemption. <laughs> at the last minute. <laughs> at the last minute. Yeah. On her knees. And then... But yeah, and then the next day for for her to you know fast forward twenty four years, or she's and made to that somehow like, have found it, like she somehow found it, she and Bill. <laughs> I just love that this and whole show greyhounds. is full of. I know <laughs> it's so full of characters that I shouldn't be rooting for. I know any of their like ending up happy, but yeah. that made me satisfied. Yeah, well, there's this element of like, yeah, if I don't, yeah, I'm with you. It's, rooting for these. Despicable you know, people. It, it allows us to be mature. Maybe that's why it's a mature satire. Because, like, Ooh, we, mm. we, yeah, like, there isn't, it isn't a gods and monsters. Like, as, as we got a little mm. more arch towards the end, but it's, it, you know, it's, um, yeah, you, if, I don't know. If, if, quote, unquote, everything can be okay for yeah. all of those people, yeah. then that means that everything can be okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Don't ignore your your worst impulses. Like let's let's yeah. let's recognize them and Yeah. I just read some great quote. I don't oh God, I'm gonna just totally like butcher it too, but it was something about like finding the sanity in your enemy is your ally or something like that. But it's sort uh-huh. of that. It's like sure. it's, you know, I, oh my God, I feel so bad. Well it's I, like Luke yeah. having to see himself in Darth Vader and have to figure out his own right. dark side. Yeah, and exactly. Yes. It's okay. Like, it's it's absolutely all right. We can look at yes. these people and be like, yeah. I mean, that is sort of the gorgeousness, too, of, like, the Selena Meyer arc is that she could be this disgusting person, like, fi- or grow into one. Because if you watch it from the beginning mm. of Veep, like, she's actually not that bad. She's actually got some really good policies. Yeah. She's She's not that bad. She but she grows, out. but it creates this badness in her, you know. Mm. Anyway, so she does. She goes for it. She's completely, you know, um, thrown out all of her morals by the end in order to get what she wants. And really, her presidency was like legacy ish, oh, yeah. right? It wasn't oh. that. It, like it didn't do much. No, you know. And so there's, yeah. I don't know. There's also like a, I, there's a piece in that too. Like and Tom I'm just Hanks going interrupts yeah, the thing, exactly. and you're like, of course. Is that the best? It's is the, that the I best? Mean, no, when we read that, it was very fitting. when we read that, because it, it, but it, it goes all the way back to the pilot. Oh yeah. And so like, I, I just, I don't know. I, we were all crying at the last oh. read, of course. But when I read that joke, I just looked at, I just, <laughs> I looked at Dave and I just said that was a love letter. I just, it was yeah. a love letter yeah. to our show. Like that, That's I, really sweet. like you could not end it better oh, with, yeah. than with the Tom Hanks. I, oh, there will not be another show like it. <laughs> I think. Thanks for like going through all the like cinema studies with me. <laughs> oh yeah, well because it's all there. It's all there. I love that though. Like totally. I will nerd out on this show. Like that's so fun. And I can't wait to start the rewatch from the beginning and pay in particular attention to the last season because it was there was a h- longer hiatus between seasons. Yeah, that's true. And I think you guys intentionally ramped up the <laughs> insanity. Yeah. But also just the pace. Yeah. The jokes and there was came a logistic. Faster. I mean, I will admit there was a logistic thing too. Mm-hmm. We were originally going to have ten episodes, and it went down to seven. Mm-hmm. So that just happened. So and I know that part of this was Julia Louis Dreyfus got very sick in the beginning. Yeah, be- before that was we why went it was back. Delayed. That was yeah, before yeah. we went back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so you know, 
Yeah, it's it's interesting. It's it's yeah. It's uh, such a great show. I'm lucky. I'm really happy. Thank you for yeah. Is there an, any big like on the horizon? Anything next? Any project? Um, Do you hate I wouldn't that say question? big. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'm gonna hate the question until I love it. I uh, That's a right. Great answer. <laughs> yes. Um, so catch up with me. But yeah, I um, I've got I'm I'm. Um, co-execing on something that's been um, whose pilot script has been sold oh, so sweet. we will see how that goes um, and where else yeah like um, you know I've like taken some voiceover gigs like it'll really yes. interesting uh, yeah I, <laughs> there's a movie I did that'll be on Apple TV whenever that's a thing oh um, right uh-huh. <laughs> Call- Apple TV, yeah. yes. Um, I know. Supposedly that's going to happen. It's so Any fun. day now? I know. And then there's, there's like the Disney thing too, which like I looked up. My, yeah. my, my daughter is like, Mama, in, you know, it's coming up. The vault's going to be completely open. Because <laughs> yes. that's the best thing about this Disney Plus oh, thing, yeah. in my opinion, is oh, that there's yeah. going to be no more vaults. Oh, yeah. That's no, very exciting. It's going to gonna all open up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To a parent and, a, and an inner child. Wait, I want to ask you about – I have to ask you about so many things, but we have to yeah. go. Um, do you have any parting words of wisdom for actors, for those who are mm. doing the struggling actor or struggling artist thing? Oh, you want to just – just tell the truth. Mm. Just tell the truth. Mm-hmm. That's what you're here to do. That's what you're here to do. Just in the storytelling the or in general or both? <laughs> All of it. <laughs> Definitely uh-huh. don't lie. Like I think that in general <laughs> lying just makes your life harder. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, like just – I don't know. I feel like I feel like just uh, like reminding yourself. Yeah, just reminding yourself that that's your that's your purpose. And all and and um it's called a play. Yeah. It's a screenplay, it's a teleplay, <laughs> it's a play. Yeah, yeah. Um so yeah, that's, you know, remember the present moment. That's the that's the best advice. It really is. <laughs> Way to bring it back to the the your daughter and the idea of play and yeah, the idea of childlike wonder and Exactly. Please. You, this is, I didn't know you were such a, like, Make. like you said, dramaturg, like, <laughs> totally you mean. really have that brain, and I feel like I do too, and I, <laughs> it's the theater background thing of the, like, it all comes back to text analysis, and like, yeah, yeah. tell the truth, like, all of yeah. that comes back to, like, what's on the page, mm-hmm. what are my, um, what is it called, given circumstances? Yeah, yeah, action, um, what do I want? What do I want, yeah, a lot of that. Do you do a lot of the, like, do you, do you, it's all, um, from there you get the character. Is there any outside-in approach, kind of physicality I, stuff? What I do, and this is my personal, like, this isn't even what we train to do, but, like, I definitely like to choose, especially for auditions, um, but then mm. also when you're building a character, I like to choose just three externals, even if they're bullshit, even if they're, like, three? Yeah, just, but even if they're just, like, just to get it out of yourself. Yeah, but, like, yeah. even if it's, like, oh, I don't know, I, even if... You just identify, like, maybe how they talk or, like, maybe, hmm. you know what I mean? Just something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not like you're not always having a limp. Not a crazy tip. But, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but just some kind of, like, I don't know. Uh, it's just a trick. But it's some just, choice. like, yeah. yeah, some kind of, like, oh. Um, but, like, I, I'd like to choose three what I call externals and internals. So, like. <gasps> oh, wow. Um, but this is for characters. So, it's, like. Oh, this person reminds me of my, I don't know my cousin. So therefore, I'm you know gonna definitely like uh, mm. practice jumping on everything, or you know like or speaking you know speaking quickly as cool. opposed to speaking. Or this person reminds me of my girlfriend who's a yoga teacher. So therefore, I'm mm. gonna maybe elongate my pauses or or not pauses, but like elongate my vowels. Wow! But that's just mm. for fun. Honestly, totally. once you're in it. It's probably not going to happen. Oh, I was going to say. But like, it's just a way to like. When you, for example, have a role for 10 years. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. The, I've got lots of like little like, you yeah. know, backstory things, fun kind of things to mm. rest on for Amy. Um, externals and internals. Yeah. Like plenty. externals for Amy would be like, I remember in the beginning, I always wanted to. Um, uh, oh, that like she like sometimes I'll hold my hands behind my back. Oh God, if I just, don't, you know, like, you like if you're being, briefly like, yeah, right, yeah, like if you're like, uh, uh-huh, you know, like, you know, um, but is she something about the phone, phone, of course, <laughs> there's the phone always in her she hand. She was on her phone long before everybody else was all Constant. on their phone. Because that was a chief of staff thing. The chief of staff I met never let go of her phone, so yes. I just never let go of Amy's I phone. Like and that. That, so yeah, the phone, the holding behind... And then I I always wanted to put my my hand on my chin mm. as like as if to like hold back her like yes. motion, <laughs> like yes. to just be like no, 
But that was, so those are like the three things. She's so There's obviously other stuff, but those are like the three things that I could like, they're like anchors. They're like, you know, just to kind of like anchor yourself. And then internals would be like, it's like speed chess. That was what I was, I would always remind myself, like Mm. speed chess, like make decisions quickly and they're aggressive. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> you know, yeah. they're either aggressive or defensive, but it's like speech. It's like okay, and uh, is see a, three um, moves ahead. Um, ooh, okay. And, and is a backstory part of an internal? Yeah, sort of. I'm fascinated by how backstories change in TV. Oh, I hate it. Because you learn new stuff. I yeah. hate it. But yes, that's you, like, part of met it. Pro- some You're of her like, family. You're like, who are those two guys like, on her desk then? If they're not her brothers? Oh, right. Because she doesn't have any brothers now. <laughs> but in general, they were really good at at like, <laughs> like you said, like. Taking the perspective of each almost actor and yeah. being like, what have you done with this arc? Yeah, that was awesome. Totally. That but that's awesome. inevitably going to be a thing where, like, you have something in your head that then right. is contradicted. Right, like, right, right, right. Which is, and but you, it does teach you to be flexible and to roll with it. Like life. Uh-huh. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I – yeah, well, and, but, yeah, internals were – when I call them – this is Anna thing. This is not even a training thing. But, like, mm. when I call them that, it's more like motivators. It's like what – like cool. what would make a choice – Versus at this choice. Do you know mm. what I mean? So it's, again, yeah. speed chess would be like, all right, she's going to, like, she's going to be aggressive or she feels like she's fighting a war or she feels, you know what I mean? As opposed yeah. to, like, you know, I don't know. Like, if it was a different character, it might be, like, be gentle. Like, uh-huh. Amy's never going to have be gentle as her internal. Right. Do you, Do you think about, I mean? is it objective versus, is it called super objective? Which is the overall like what the character wants on a big level is like to oh, be yeah, loved yeah, or yeah. to yeah, I not be alone. I don't play so much there. I probably would if I if I was talking about if we were doing a play where we knew where it's going to end up. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Oh, that is interesting about TV where you know. Right. You but don't... people's quote unquote super objectives change. Totally. I right? certainly did for her in season seven. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 So. I love that. Yeah. I love stuff like that. <laughs> Thank you for going there with me. Yeah, we could talk forever, but I think we have to go. (laughs) Anna, thank you. Thank you. This is awesome. In the Envelope, an awards podcast, is recorded at Lotus Productions, Hyperbolic Audio, and Big Yellow Duck in New York City, and Soundbox LA, Mark Rouse Studios, and Buzzies in Los Angeles. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, tweet us at In the Envelope, leave a review. We want to hear from you. Visit Backstage.com for more content and resources for working artists. And don't forget, you can subscribe to Backstage with a free trial by using the code ENVELOPE at checkout. Thanks, as always, to podcast producer Wiz, Jamie Muffet. You can follow him on Twitter at Jamie Music NYC. You can follow me, Jack Smart, on Twitter at Jack Smart Writes. Thank you to the team at Backstage, the most trusted name in casting, Mark Stinson, Samantha Sherlock, Francis Ramos, Caitlin Watkins, and especially should-be Oscar nominee, Casey Howe. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.